Hey guys, in this video you're going to write your first C++ program, so sit back, relax, and well, enjoy the show. Hey, if you wouldn't mind, please like, comment, and subscribe. One like equals one prayer for the YouTube algorithm. I'm going to tell you why you need to learn C++. C++ is a fast language, like really fast. It's commonly used in advanced graphics applications. A few examples would include Adobe applications, video editing software, anything that's graphics intensive. C++ is considered a middle level language, therefore it's commonly used with embedded systems. And most importantly, it's commonly used with creating video games. I like video games. Like a lot. Compared to other programming languages, you could say that C++ is a middle level language. Programming languages tend to be on a spectrum. The higher level of programming languages, the more it resembles human language. Languages that are closer to being lower level resemble hardware instructions. Higher level languages such as Python, Java, and C Sharp are very easy to write with and to understand, but they tend to be slower. C++ and C, they take a little more effort to write, but they're very fast. They have the benefit of working closely with machine hardware while still somewhat resembling human language. Just a fair warning, there is a learning curve with C++, but if you can learn it, it's worth it. I did some research on Glassdoor.com. The average salary for a C++ software engineer is $124,000. However, I'm just going to say this right now. Watching this video by itself will not guarantee you a job. It's a good entry point though. You'll want to watch the video, practice, create a portfolio, work on your job interview skills. Then you have a good chance of getting an entry level job. But as you can see, there's a lot of potential. So why not learn C++? There's two things you'll need to get started. One is a text editor. A few options include, but are not limited to, would be VS Code, Code Blocks, or even Notepad. VS Code and Code Blocks are also considered IDEs, Integrated Development Environments. They are a text editor as well as a workshop that contain a lot of useful developer tools. In this video, I'm going to show you how to download VS Code but feel free to use any text editor that you're comfortable with. Secondly, we'll need a compiler. A compiler is a piece of software that will parse source code to machine instructions. And that's really it. If you're using Windows or Linux, you'll probably want to go with GCC. If you're running Mac, you'll probably go with Clang. Okay, Clang has a really cool logo. It's Blue Eyes White Dragon. So let's get started. Well, all right then, everybody. Now we are going to download VS Code, that text editor I was talking about. Head to this URL, code.visualstudio.com. Then select the correct download for your operating system. I'm running Windows. I'll select Windows. Then I will open this. Read the agreement. Yes, I actually did read it that fast. I accept the agreement. Next. 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 I'll create a desktop icon. Why not? Next and install. We might as well launch it. Finish. In VS Code, there's two extensions I would recommend. Go to the left toolbar underneath extensions. We will look up C slash C++. And we would like to download this extension. Uh, let's pretend that this wasn't already installed. So I'm going to install it. Then the next extension I recommend is Code Runner. Here it is. Then just click this blue button to install it. Okay, let's close out of this. We're going to create a new folder to hold our C++ projects. Go to the left toolbar, explore, open folder. I'll create a new folder on my desktop. New folder. I'll name this C++ projects. That sounds good to me. Then select folder. Within this folder, we'll create a new file. I'll name this hello world.cpp. Make sure to get that cpp extension at the end. That means it's a C++ file. Okay, we now have a C++ file to work with. Now we just need to download that compiler that parses source code to machine instructions. There's a great set of instructions at this URL, code.visualstudio.com slash docs. Let's head to C++. There's different installation instructions depending on your operating system. You'll be downloading GCC on Linux if you're running Linux, GCC on Windows for Windows, and Clang for Mac OS. 
downloading a compiler for Linux and Mac is actually really easy. I can cover that in like 30 seconds. Windows is a little more complicated, but let's begin with Linux. So all you're going to do is open up Terminal and enter the following command, gcc slash v. That will check to see if it's currently installed. If it's not, you enter this command in. Then you install the GNU compiler tools by typing in this command right here. And that's all you need to do with Linux. If you're on Mac, you'll download Clang, open Terminal, type in this command. If Clang isn't installed, all you type is this command, and that's it. So pretty easy, right? If you're using the Windows operating system, there's way more steps. So let's head to step three. We'll need to install MinGWW64. You can click this link to the installer. This is an executable. I'll open this when it's done. Click next, 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 wait for it. We might as well run this, then finish. Now we will follow the installation instructions on this website. Under step five, we will type pacman dash capital S Y U enter. Type Y, then enter to proceed with the installation. Type Y, then enter again to confirm to proceed. Now we'll need to find this program from the start menu. msys2, then type this command. pacman su enter. Type Y, then enter to proceed with the installation. Now we'll need to enter this command in. There's a lot to type here. Pacman dash s dash dash needed base dash dev l min gw dash w64 dash x86 underscore 64 dash tool chain then enter then just hit enter proceed with the installation type yes type y enter again then give it a moment then we can close out of this window we'll have to find the bin folder of mingw it's likely going to be within your c drive Go to msys64, mingw64, bin, then copy this address. We'll need to add that path to the Windows path environment variable. To do so, search settings, settings. We'll search edit environment variables. Go to Path, Edit. Let's pretend that this wasn't here. I'm going to go to New. Paste that address. OK. OK. Close out of this window. Just to be sure that our compiler is working and available, let's open up Command Prompt. Command Prompt. Then type in this command. G plus plus dash dash version. Enter. Yeah, it looks like it's good to go. We have now successfully installed our compiler. All right, everybody, let's write our first C++ program. At the top of our C++ file, we are going to type include within angle brackets IO stream. IO stream is a header file that contains functions for basic input and output operations. By writing include iostream, we're including that header file. Then we have access to a whole bunch of useful input and output operations. Now we'll need a main function. The main function is where the program begins. We'll type int main parentheses curly braces. We begin the program by invoking the main function and read any code within the main function starting at the top and working our way down. At the end of our main function, we'll want 
return zero, then add a semicolon. If we reach return zero, that means there were no problems in this program. However, if one is returned, that means there was a problem, there was an issue. So place return zero at the end of your main function. What we'll do in this lesson is write some basic output. To write some output, you'll type STD. Contrary to what you might believe, in this case, it doesn't mean sexually transmitted diseases. It means standard. Follow STD with two colons, then type C out. C means character, out means output. Altogether, this means standard character output. We're going to display some characters as output. Then follow C out with two left angle brackets. These characters mean output. It's also known as the left shift operator when used with numbers. What characters would we like to display as output? Within quotation marks, let's write something. What's a food you like? I like pizza. I'll type that. Then follow this statement with a semicolon. At the end of statements, we add a semicolon. That lets the compiler know that this statement is done. It's sort of like the period at the end of a sentence. That's when you know the sentence is complete. So I'm going to save this. I'll hold Control S, or you can go to File, Save, then click this button to run it. And there's my output. I like pizza. On the next line, I'll type STD, two colons, C out, two left angle brackets for output. I'll write a second line. It's really good. Then I'll run this again. You can press this icon to clear your output. Uh-oh, we have a problem. I like pizza, it's really good. All of this text is on one line. What if you need the next line of text to be on, well, the next line? When you need to move your cursor down to the next line, you can follow some string of text with double left angle brackets for output, STD, colon, colon, ENDL. That means end line. And I'll do the same for my second line. I'm going to save, clear my output, run this again. Yeah, there we go. I like pizza, it's really good. Each line of text is on a different line. Another option for a new line that's better performance wise is to add a new line character within single quotes type backslash N. And let's replace that here as well. So I'm going to save, clear my output, run this again. I like pizza, it's really good. Adding a new line character does the same thing, and it's better performance wise. However, the benefit of using endline is that endline will flush the output buffer. Really, you can use either one, but I thought that might be a nice trick to show you. Now, you can write a comment. A comment is ignored by the compiler. To write a comment, you use two forward slashes. This is a comment. Comments are used for yourself for notes, or for notes for another developer. So if I were to run this again, this comment is ignored. It's not used as output or anything like that. If you need a multi-line comment, you type forward slash asterisk. Wherever you need your comment to end, you'll place asterisk forward slash again. This is a multi-line comment. And you can see that all of this is ignored as well. So comments are used as notes for yourself or for other developers. Yeah, that's a quick introduction to getting started with C++. I'll post this code in the comment section down below if you would like a copy. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to smash that like button. Leave a random comment down below. And subscribe if you'd like to become a fellow bro.